The saga involving British internet sensation and pianist Brendan Kavanagh has escalated dramatically. And this time, it's not just a simple battle against the Little Pinks, another term for Chinese nationalists. Kavanaugh's confrontation might involve an organization allegedly connected to the Chinese Communist Party, CCP, potentially turning the conflict into an espionage drama reminiscent of a Red 007 scenario. On January the 30th, Kavanaugh, also known as Dr. K, posted on his YouTube channel claiming to have received information that one of the Little Pinks, Liu Mengying, announced on a platform her intention to sue him. Supporting Liu Mengying's legal action is Christine Li, also known as Li Zhenju, identified by MI5 as a suspected CCP spy and one of the individuals present during the January 19th incident at London St Pancras railway station. There were suspicions that the woman standing afar during the conflict was Christine Li, but due to unclear footage, it could not be confirmed entirely. As everyone was wondering whether she was really there, unexpectedly, Liu Mengying, one of the Little Pinks involved, came forward and pointed her out. On January the 28th, she posted on the X platform stating, We were filming for Chinese TV, nothing to do with CCP, just a Chinese New Year video to celebrate a Chinese New Year from important figures in the Chinese community in the UK. Christine Lee was in the background with my boyfriend, but she was just accompanying. On January the 30th, Liu Mengying escalated the situation by posting several videos on the X platform of her interview with Luke Johnston, a pro-CCP supporter, also known as a foreign Wu Mao. Wu Mao commonly refers to people who are paid 50 cents to write comments in support of the CCP on social media. Together, these people form the Chinese Internet Army. In the interview, she claimed that Brendan Kavanagh's public piano performance and live YouTube broadcasts at the station were illegal under British law, emphasising that she received confirmation from Christine Lee, a lawyer allegedly identified as a CCP spy by MI5. However, Liu's post was soon deleted. Following this, on January the 30th, her ex-platform account was also suspended. Despite the deletion, Liu's post was saved by others revealing key information. First, she confirmed that the woman standing behind her and her boyfriend at the piano was indeed Christine Lee, the lawyer who was suspected of being a CCP spy and who had previously caused tension in UK-China relations. Secondly, she revealed that on January 19th, they were indeed filming a video celebrating Chinese New Year, a task requested by the CCP's external propaganda to overseas pro-CCP individuals. This contradicts Liu's earlier claim in a video that they were filming for an independent social media program and her tweet stating no connection with the CCP. This indicates that she had been lying. Third, Liu claimed in her tweet that Christine Lee, as a lawyer, deemed Kavanaugh's piano performance and live YouTube broadcast to be illegal. This suggests that their propaganda team is now planning to use the accusation of Kavanaugh conducting commercial activities in public places to attack him and demand YouTube to remove the nearly 10 million viewed live stream video. This may be because Liu Mengying's previous attempts to clarify the facts or to garner sympathy were ineffective, instead sparking a wave of anti-communist sentiment overseas. Therefore, it seems they are attempting to shift their strategy from an information war on the internet to a legal battle in an effort to quell the situation. Fourth, Liu's rapid deletion of a tweet and subsequent account suspension raised suspicions of higher level involvement, possibly due to Christine Lee's dissatisfaction with Liu for revealing her identity and demanding the deletion of the post. Therefore, the identity and background of Christine Lee are shrouded in intrigue and are likely to reveal startling details. On January the 13th, 2022, MI5 issued a rare public warning identifying British Chinese lawyer Christine Lee as an agent of influence working for the CCP and directly published her photo. The UK House of Commons Speaker Lindsay Holly conveyed MI5's warning to MPs, stating that Lee, who mingled in UK politics, was linked to the CCP's United Front Work Department and secretly used funds from China and Hong Kong for political interference activities. The United Front Work Department, distinct from the CCP's security and military intelligence, operates unofficially, 
focusing on developing spy networks overseas using non-professional agents, such as overseas Chinese elites, business people, celebrities, and so on. The methods deployed often involve co-opting, enticement, intimidation, and threats. BBC reported that the CCP refers to this department as a magic weapon, not a secret intelligence agency, but more of an influence organisation. MI5's document explicitly listed the substantial donations made by Lee, once a favoured guest of UK leaders, to British political parties and MPs. MI5's investigation found that Lee's activities were secretly coordinated by the United Front Work Department for deliberate political interference. The money flowing into the UK political system originated from China, masked through various means. Records from the UK Electoral Commission show that between 2015 and 2020, Lee donated £584,177 to Barry Gardiner, a senior Labour Party MP. Lee's son also worked in Gardiner's office. This arrangement of placing her son close to Gardiner and indirectly paying him through donations raised suspicions, especially when her son resigned immediately after Gardiner was questioned by MI5 on January 13, 2022. Gardiner, once the Shadow Secretary of State for International Trade, considered running for Labour Party leader in early 2020, but eventually did not participate. Additionally, the Sun reported that Lee began donating to Gardiner through her law firm after he became the Shadow Secretary of State for Energy in September 2015, including £180,000 to pay two parliamentary assistants, one of whom was Lee's son. This move was very strange, especially when her son resigned immediately after Gardena was questioned by MI5. This raised further suspicions. Reportedly nicknamed Beijing Barry, Gardena was once the chairman of China All Party Parliamentary Group, APPG, with Li's British Chinese Project serving as its secretariat. The British Chinese project aims to have higher participation of the British Chinese people in the UK political system by 2020. Alison Giles, Director of Security for Parliamentary Affairs, cited in a AWPG Standards Committee report, noted Lee's role in establishing the group. Though now dissolved, the group had significant influence at the time. It is claimed that Christine Lee, through this Chinese group, undertook three major initiatives. The first was on the business front, where Li assisted Chinese companies in participating in the bidding for UK nuclear power stations, as well as facilitating strategic collaborations between Huawei and British telecommunication companies. The second initiative involved investing in British politicians at various levels, cultivating individuals with potential who were in the early stages of their political careers. She supported candidates with CCP backing to participate in politics and organised trips for them to Beijing for educational visits, thereby cultivating agents for the CCP. In 2013, Lee made a personal donation of £5,000 to Member of Parliament Ed Davey, who also contributing to Davey's local party. At the time, Davy held positions as the leader of the Liberal Democratic Party and the Secretary of State for Energy and Climate Change. Also in 2013, Lee sponsored Andrew Dismore's round-trip airfare to China. Dismore was the previous Labour MP for Hendon in the UK. He visited Beijing for four days in his capacity as Chairman of the Chinese in Britain AWPG. Moreover, in 2014, Lee sponsored a Chinese dinner for the Liberal Democratic Party, primarily to support Sarah Yong, another Chinese British running for parliament. With her assistance, Sarah Yong, along with another Chinese background individual, Alan Mack, were elected as members of parliament in the UK. MI5 believes that the CCP is attempting to cultivate a new generation of political candidates. Ken McCallum, Director General of MI5, noted, We see the Chinese authorities playing the long game in cultivating contacts to manipulate opinion in China's favour, 
seeking to co-opt and influence not just prominent parliamentarians from across the political landscape, but people much earlier in their careers in public life, gradually building a debt of obligation. Local officials are increasingly targeted by the CCP to exert influence with the expectation of future returns. Several UK officials refer to the CCP's approach as seeding, believing Lee is involved in such a seeding operation. The CCP is willing to wait years for returns on their investments. The third initiative, Lee successfully penetrated the upper echelons of British politics and business. In 2006, through the British Chinese project, she pushed for the political participation of Chinese in the UK, claiming to represent the interests of Chinese in Britain and promote diversity in British society. However, the Times noted that this initiative provided Lee a platform to connect with more British political figures, subsequently acting as a bridge between the CCP and British politicians. It is claimed that Lee's network extends across the entire political spectrum of Westminster, reaching the highest levels. She has met with then Prime Minister Theresa May and David Cameron, even placing red couplets on the door of 10 Downing Street. Additionally, MI5 pointed out that Lee's engagement with senior and junior MPs aimed to advance the CCP's agenda in UK politics, challenging voices questioning the CCP on human rights issues. MI5 especially warned anyone interacting with Lee to be mindful of her affiliation with the Chinese state and remit to advance the CCP's agenda, accusing her of seeking to covertly interfere in UK politics. Lee has a few other roles which raise more suspicions. Public records show that in 2008, she became the chief legal advisor to the CCP's embassy in the UK, providing legal services to the embassy. As Lee's ties with the CCP deepened, she was appointed as an overseas legal advisor by the CCP's State Council Overseas Chinese Affairs Office. In 2018, this office was integrated into the CCP's United Front Work Department, making Li a member of this influence agency. During Xi Jinping's visit to the UK in 2015, invited by then Prime Minister Cameron, Li was present as a special VIP guest, meeting and taking photos with Xi. She also attended a lecture by former head of the United Front Work Department, Yu Chuan, expressing her desire to help the world understand China. In 2019, as a representative of overseas Chinese, Li was invited to the CCP's National Day celebration, smiling broadly in the front row and shaking hands with Xi Jinping and previous Premier Li Keqiang and others. According to the Times, in 2020, Li attended a banquet hosted by the CCP's embassy, where she criticised Western countries, including the UK. Her criticism came amidst severe repression by the CCP of Hong Kong's pursuit of freedom, leading to condemnation from Western nations. Additionally, official CCP media frequently reported Li's attendance at various political events in Beijing. For example, in December 2018, she attended the 40th anniversary celebration of reform and opening up in Beijing at the invitation of the United Front Work Department. In December 2017, she attended the establishment conference of the Overseas Chinese Affairs Office Legal Advisory Group, sharing her experiences in political lobbying and the Belt and Road Initiative's business opportunities and legal aspects. She openly admitted that influencing public opinion to protect the rights of overseas Chinese in the UK was her goal in political lobbying. In 2013, the People's Daily Online UK channel featured a special column for Lee. In 2009, she attended the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference as a representative of overseas Chinese. These activities suggest that Lee is not only an overseas agent for the CCP, but also appears to be an undercover member of the CCP in the UK. Intriguingly, despite MI5's awareness of her questionable activities, they have been unable to secure evidence against her for years. A BBC report noted that MI5 officials have been investigating whether there is sufficient evidence to charge Lee with any criminal offence, but to no avail highlighting the covert nature of her infiltration. 
Eventually, MI5 had no choice but to issue a public warning to Parliament, explicitly naming her as a CCP influence agent. This move was to counteract her influence. However, Lee retaliated. In July of last year, Lee formally sued MI5, alleging human rights violations and seeking compensation and vindication. Today, Lee still lives freely in the UK, continues as the chairman of the largest Chinese law firm in the country, and maintains her influence in British politics on behalf of the CCP. Additionally, understanding Lee's background sheds light on another mystery. Why the group of nationalists initially interacted amicably with the pianist before suddenly becoming confrontational. If one watches Kavanagh's full live stream, they would notice that before the conflict, one of the individuals involved, Adelina Zhang, the lady in red, and Newton Leung, who later became famous for saying don't touch her, as well as another male pianist, were initially indifferent to Kavanagh's filming and even interacted amicably. The man even played a piece on the spot. Everything seemed harmonious at that time. However, the situation dramatically changed when Liu Mengying approached Kavanagh, asking for the deletion of the video. Newton Learn's expression turned sour, including Adelina Zhang's, both demanding the video's deletion on the grounds of portrait rights infringement. What followed was Learn's now globally her. famous, Don't touch, Don't touch her. Don't touch her, please. The sudden shift in attitude among these major propagandists appeared to be the result of Christine Lee's arrival on the scene. The supposed need for secrecy around their filming was just an excuse. The real secret was Lee, who couldn't appear in Kavanagh's footage. Lee's presence significantly altered the nature of the incident. It seems that because of Lee's special need for secrecy, Liu Mengying and others confronted Kavanagh to delete the footage. Adelina Zhang, who previously interacted amicably with Kavanagh, suddenly changed expression, claiming portrait rights infringement while Newton lost control, possibly to impress the big boss. Newton Lun was later revealed to have been a reserve CCP party member while teaching at Dalian Foreign Language University, holding a leadership position and currently working at a Confucius Institute in the UK. The Confucius Institute is considered an overseas spy organisation of the CCP's United Front Work Department. Adelina Zhang has been exposed for hosting CCP-led Chinese New Year and National Day celebrations at the Chinese Embassy in the UK, confirming her status as a major external propagandist for the CCP. She has also been photographed with numerous British dignitaries and celebrities, raising suspicions of being a UK's version of Fang Fang, who was suspected of being a CCP spy in the US. Therefore, the nationalists clashing with the pianist are not ordinary individuals. They have special backgrounds. The future developments of this incident, potentially evolving into an espionage drama, remain to be seen. In recent years, the international community has grown increasingly vigilant about the CCP's espionage activities abroad. On January the 29th, Canada officially announced the deportation of a Chinese woman who had worked for the CCP's Overseas Chinese Affairs Office, OCAO. The deportation order issued on August 28th last year has recently been made public. The Immigration and Refugee Board, IRB, of Canada ruled that Jing Zhang, who worked for the OCAO in China for 11 years, exerted pressure on overseas Chinese during her tenure. The OCAO infiltrating the Chinese community in Canada surveyed and suppressed anti-communist individuals, including Taiwanese, Uyghurs, Falun Gong practitioners and Chinese Canadian citizens. They were effectively engaging in espionage activities. The IRB noted that Zhang served in the Yangzhou Overseas Chinese Affairs Office from 2008 to 2019, holding positions such as Director of Public Relations and Director of Overseas Liaison. She travelled aboard four times a year, targeting groups within China and overseas, including students, celebrities, government personnel, organisations and business people.
It is noteworthy that the OCAO is also a spy agency under the CCP's United Front Work Department. Various overseas Chinese associations, hometown associations and overseas Chinese organisations, many of which are branches of the United Front Work Department abroad, are responsible for recruiting wealthy businessmen and celebrities, including those from Hong Kong, Macau and Taiwan. The CCP's intelligence gathering agencies abroad are highly deceptive, with their true nature difficult to discern from their names. For example, the China Overseas Friendship Association is actually an overseas branch of the CCP's United Front Work Department. The existence of these organisations allows the CCP to infiltrate Western societies thoroughly. Canadian Chinese author Shen Xue stated that the CCP has always sought to leverage overseas Chinese, planting agents and informants in foreign, especially democratic societies. These individuals feel valued and also hope to gain benefits from the CCP government. She explained that such mechanisms formed by the CCP overseas pose a significant threat to local societies. They instill fear in the local Chinese community, making them feel the CCP's presence nearby. They are also unable to truly enjoy freedom of speech and other crucial rights, hindering their integration into local democratic societies. Even though they have voted with their feet to live in democratic countries, they remain under the yoke of the TCP's authoritarian regime. Furthermore, if the number of these so-called patriotic overseas Chinese is significant, they can also create divisions in local societies, becoming a centrifugal force that undermines and disrupts democratic nations. Mm -hmm.